Okay, good morning and welcome to today's Finance Committee meeting. My name is Councilmember Daniel Drum and I'm chair of the committee. We've been joined by Councilmember Adrian Adams, Councilmember Keith Powers, Councilmember Francisco Moyer, Councilmember Barry Gudenchik, Councilmember Rory Lansman, Councilmember Andy Cohen, uh, Councilmember Steve Matteo, and Councilmember Jimmy Van Bremer. Uh, today the committee will be voting on three items and Councilmember Robert Cornegy just joined us. <laughs> Uh, today, the committee will be voting on three items, a transparency resolution, an expense budget modification, and a revenue budget modification. Let's start with the transparency resolution, which sets forth the new designation and changes in the designation of certain organizations receiving local aging and youth discretionary funding and funding pursuant to certain initiatives in the budget. Organizations appearing in the resolution that have not yet completed the pre-qualification process conducted by the Mayor's Office of Contract Services, the Council or another entity are identified in the attached charts with an asterisk. As with all transparency resolutions, Council members will have to disclose the disclosure form, will have to sign a disclosure form indicating whether or not a conflict exists with any of the groups on the attached list. If any Council member has a potential conflict of interest with any of the organizations listed, he or she has the opportunity to disclose the conflict at the time of their vote. As a reminder, please disclose any conflicts you, you may have <clears throat> excuse me, with proposed subcontractors used by organizations sponsored by discretionary funding. These disclosures must be made before the subcontractor can be approved. Marley Marcellus from the General Counsel's Office is here and can assist you with any questions or concerns regarding disclosures. Also regarding the transparency resolution, I'd like to call to members' attention that since the email you received last night containing the charts attached to this resolution, there have been two additions. First, there was an addition of $400,000 to Man Up Incorporated, as indicated in chart four, and second, there were changes to the Dove Initiative, as are indicated in chart 10. Next, we have two budget modifications. Briefly, the expense budget modification, MN6, would transfer $970.3 million between various units of appropriation in fiscal 2018. The net effect of these transfers on the budget will be zero. The revenue budget modification, MN7, would recognize $783.8 million in new revenues for fiscal 2018. These new revenues combined with a $400 million reduction in prior year payables and a $1.4 billion reduction of the general reserve for a total of $2.58 billion will be added to the budget stabilization account to prepay debt service for fiscal 2019. Yesterday, this committee held a hearing so that council members could ask questions of the Office of Management and Budget and obtain additional details about the actions in the modifications. As I stated yesterday, that hearing was not business as usual, but it was necessary given that the modifications contained large transfers of funding that had they been included at budget adoption would have received more public scrutiny and oversight than has historically been given to budget modification actions. After the hearing, there were some outstanding issues that required follow-up with the agency. The Finance Division sent OMB a list of questions and I appreciate and thank OMB for the speed in which they responded. A list of the questions and answers were emailed to you earlier this morning by Council and copies are also on the desks before you. OMB also provided a hard copy, and I'm showing you right here, the hard copy, because it was not available by email, um, of the school sur uh, support services contract uh, which I have here. In addition to the follow-up information OMB provided, the administration has agreed to a new process which will allow for increased information sharing and collaboration with OMB prior to the submission of budget modifications to the Council for approval. Broadly, OMB has agreed to provide pre-modification briefings for Council members, new reports and data regarding requested modifications, and significantly changed programs, more time for discussion and negotiation on modification items and to testify at hearings regarding budget modifications at the discretion of the Council. 
These new procedures will certainly lead to a more cooperative process where members have the necessary information to make considered determinations to hold the administration accountable for its spending. I thank the speaker for his leadership in ensuring that this body has the tools it needs in order to conduct rigorous oversight and the administration for its willingness to work with us towards our shared goal of transparency. Are there any questions now on today's items? Before I ask Billy Martin, committee clerk, to call the roll, I'd like to remind my colleagues that the Finance Committee will meet on April 18th at 10 a.m. in Council Chambers to hold a joint hearing with the Committee on Education and Land Use to review the recent Council report, Planning to Learn, the School Building Challenge, and several related pieces of legislation. Hopefully everybody will show up for that. And with that now, I'd like to ask Billy to call the roll. William Martin, Committee Clerk, Roll Call Vote Committee on Finance. All items are coupled. Chair Drum. I vote aye. Cohen. Uh, Mr. Chair, can I explain my vote for a second? Yes, you may. Uh, I just want to uh, thank you and the Speaker's Office. I think yesterday's hearing really was of value. I think that uh, focusing a little uh, sunshine, it's a significant amount of money that uh, is uh, being modified here. The budget's being modified in a significant way. So uh, I just want to uh, applaud you and the leadership here. I think that we did uh, our work as a value yesterday. So I vote aye. Thank you. Carnegie. Aye. Cumbo. Aye. Lansman. Aye. Van Bramer. Aye. Grodenchik. Aye. Adams. Aye. Moya. Aye. Powers. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> on MN7, I am voting aye. And on MN6, I'll be voting aye. But I, I, I am reluctant to do so because of uh, something I think we highlighted yesterday in yesterday's hearing, which is that, A, there are, I think, items in this budget that need real review and highlight the school bus grant program, which I think has been a constant source of conversation debate. And I would be not doing, I think, my due diligence to, to ensure that the council is providing uh, real oversight about why we continue to fund that program, which I, I think my predecessor made. Um, a lot of valid points around whether the legality of it and the constitutionality of it, uh, uh, for starters. Um, you know, second, I understand that we have a long list of items in here, and we have a we have, we have a diligence to make sure that the city is funded on our obligations. So we we estimate uh, there's items in here that would allow for the closure of a facility on Rikers Island. Something I know you support and I support, um, but the process by which we are asked to vote on a billion dollars uh, readjustment. Uh, with items in it that I think really uh, almost independently deserve ind oversight um, is a is a is a difficult thing I think for any council member to, to be asked to do. I, I, I wanted to applaud you and the finance division and the speaker for for I think the first time in a long time actually asking questions and asking allowing us to do that. So while I, I support many of the items in here, there are ones that I think uh, I, I I wish this process were done in a different way to not have us uh, have to vote on one billion dollars of, uh, of, of changes to the budget and another I think 700 or so in, in new cost estimates um, but to allow us to have these independent items brought up and and voted on independently and to have more oversight and more time truthfully to be able to talk about these issues so thank you for that work and I, I do hope a, a new process brings out new results and an opportunity to look at these items independently thank you Mario. Thank you. Um, I appreciate my colleagues' uh, comments. Uh, I'm going to go a step further. Um, I'm just fundamentally opposed to the bus grant program. I have been since we voted on uh, four years ago. I question the legality. Uh, for those reasons, I'm going to vote no on M30 and I and the rest. Gibson. Preconceived resolution and M31 are adopted by the committee. 12 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, with M30 being adopted by the committee. 11 in the affirmative, and excuse me, 10 in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstentions. Okay, and with that, we are going to hold the vote open for another 10 minutes or so. Thank you. Thank you to all the members, and uh, we'll see you a little later today. Thank you.